Are you ready to learn about how to calm down before public speaking? Well, I'm gonna share with you a really simple strategy that's a game changer, both for me and for my clients. I know how nerve wracking it can be to get up on a stage in front of a whole bunch of people and speak. I know this because I'm a professional speaker, but I wasn't always a professional speaker. And in fact, my very first speech or my very first practice for my very first speech, I bombed. And I bombed because I got into my head and I got myself all wrapped up in my content and I forgot why I was doing what I was doing. So I'm gonna share with you a strategy that I've developed, that I use, that I've shared with my clients, and actually, the guy behind the camera today, Nate, he used this strategy in front of a few thousand people recently, and it worked. He said he got on stage and he wasn't nervous at all. So I'd like to share first a little backstory so you can so you can hear how I learned this technique or discovered it. I was already a few years into my public speaking career, but I always got nervous every time I took the stage. And I used to do this event called the Women's Success Summit. It was a three-day event. And I tell you that a few days before the event, I would have fantasies that the event would get canceled because I started getting so nervous about getting up and speaking. And one of the things that I had to do at this particular Women's Success Summit on day two was I had to make an offer for one of my programs. And I really didn't like making offers. I had a lot of resistance and fear around rejection, around people not wanting to work with me, not wanting to buy what I was selling. So I got up on that second day, nervous as all hell, and delivered my offer, and it kind of sucked. And in fact, I got off of the stage, and that day, nobody bought what I was selling. So I really was feeling bad. And so I came back on the third day and one of my mentor was there with me and he was helping me with this event. And he said, all right, well, it's the morning of the third day, the first speech of the day. And he's like, you know what you have to do, right? You have to re-offer your program again. And I was like, no, I don't wanna do it. I'm, that didn't work yesterday, can't I just skip it? He's like, no, you really need to make this offer or else you're not gonna make any money on this event and it's not gonna be profitable. And let me tell you, I seriously considered still not making an offer because I was that afraid of getting up there and bombing again. And so I was like, all right. He said, so what are you gonna do to prepare? I said, well, I have all these slides that I created. I'm gonna talk about this and I'm gonna show this and I'm gonna do that. And let me, you know what? Let me go fix the slide. I gotta change a few things. Let me go get to work on that. He said, no, you're not gonna do that. We're gonna put away the slides. We're gonna put away the notes and you're gonna come backstage with me and I'm gonna do an exercise with you. And I was like freaked out because in my world, maybe this resonates with you, I thought that the answer to all my problems and challenges came from my head. I thought that the answer was a better structure, a better outline, a better slide deck, a better story to tell from the stage. I thought that if I focused on these areas, these mental areas, that I was gonna be able to be more calm and deliver a better presentation. But instead, my mentor insisted on taking me backstage and doing an exercise with me. So he sat me down and he said, all right, now I want you to put your hand on your chest and I want you to imagine the audience and I want you to imagine all the love that you have for them. And I was like, love? What does this have to do with anything? I need to de deliver a speech. It's all about me delivering my speech, but whatever. I decided to go with it because he was my mentor. So he said, imagine all the love that you're gonna deliver to this audience. And now imagine them sending love right back at you. Imagine them receiving what you're giving and being so appreciative. And now I want you to imagine, and as you're breathing out, imagine sending love and appreciation to this audience and wisdom. And then breathe back and imagine receiving love and wisdom and appreciation. And imagine sending love and wisdom and appreciation and receiving love and gratitude and sending and receiving and sending and receiving. And we did this for 20 minutes. We did this for 20 minutes, inhaling, exhaling, sending love and receiving gratitude and all sorts of beautiful things like that. No thinking about what I was gonna say, 
no thinking about what slides I was going to use, fully just focusing on fostering the emotions of love and gratitude. And wouldn't you know, when we finished the thing, I opened my eyes and he goes, how do you feel? And I was like, I feel so connected. I feel so ready. He's like, now from that place, what do you want to say to this audience? And I just wrote five bullet points down on a, on a note card and I got on stage without any fear and I just delivered those thoughts. I delivered my heart. I delivered the, the, the emotions that were running through me. I just expressed them and allowed them to move through me into the audience. And I'm going to tell you that I had one of the few times in my life up to that point, I got a standing ovation from the audience. So I knew that I'd connected on a much deeper level than I'd ever connected in that event and probably ever connected before. And my nerves were completely gone. So I tell you this story because so often when we want to calm down before a public, before public speaking, we think by focusing on learning our content more and practicing it and reviewing it and restructuring it and reorganizing it, we're going to calm down. When actually what really works is to tap into the emotions that we want to feel. So it's not about overcoming fear. It's about transmuting or, or alchemizing fear into something else. And really the best thing that I've found to to alchemize fear is to focus on love and to focus on service. And in fact, Zig Ziglar, who's a big time motivational speaker who's passed on, he used to say, when you're nervous, get in service. And so breathing deep calms down your sympathetic nervous system and getting and tapping into the heart and actually putting your hands on your chest and feeling your heart and breathing in love and appreciation and breathing out love and appreciation in and out and doing that for a few minutes, I guarantee you, it will not only help you calm down, it will help you connect to your audience in a whole new way. To put it in a nutshell, right? Rather than focusing on what and how, which are the two very mental functions, what am I gonna say, how am I gonna say it, what, how, what, how, what, how, I want you to focus on who and why. Who am I here to serve? Why am I here to serve them? Who and why, who and why, who and why? And from that place, I guarantee that you're gonna do a much better job and it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable when you do it. If you are interested in learning more about these types of skills and strategies, you can go ahead and download my Monetize Your Magic playbook, which is free and we link to it below. So go ahead and get your copy now in order to align your business with who you really are, what you're really up to in the world and create more grace, ease, and joy in the process.